this? Uh, yeah, so I did a little bit of work on uh, that hackpad, just sort of collecting, I'll, I'll paste it in the chat as soon as I get it up here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping to sort of like, play a number of these sort of identity systems here uh, into this, just get a hackpad going as a starting point of research. And then once that sort of settles a bit, um, either push that as an issue or a, um, uh, if, or as some sort of contribution to the dynamic data repo. Um, so I'm just adding you for really quick here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and so I think it's that's in doing some of that work, it, it seemed like a couple of small things have already started to show up, um, which I think is worth, you know, just paste the hack pad itself. Um, and basically I'm just starting like really, really, really simple mapping concepts and trying to like, okay, what are the, do we have agreement on terms? Does, you know, does a verifiable claim mean the same thing across a number of papers? Does it, um, you know, to keep our cryptography, does that, is that interpreted to mean the same thing? What are the variations on that? Um, claims, proofs, attestations, and some of that showing up. And just like trying to collect some of this stuff up into one spot. And then the next thing I'm hoping to do is layer on the OAuth conversation because OAuth is quite specifically about third party um, access control and where you sort of have this middle person. Um, mainly just to like, I'm finding one of my, one of the things that we're seeing a lot, particularly in the decentralized space is a lot of really heavy engineering, which is great and really exciting, but not seeing is not enough like long-term road mapping where it's like, okay, cool, where is this going to go in a year? Where, you know, what, what are we headed towards? And, uh, and so for that reason, I think it'd be really, the contribution I'm hoping to make to the, to the working group on this identity side is just, here's how these concepts, here's the things that we should be aware of when planning or thinking about an identity system. Um, and particularly, how can that intersect with some of the other areas of the dynamic data? Um, working group, such as like um, that file system uh, example from IPFS Companion is like a perfect one, in my opinion, where it's like, cool, the, you've, you've already come up with like a lot of the elements of privileged access and like uh, sandboxing. And so like, can we, can we sort of figure out how that, can we drive those concepts all the way through into a sort of authentication spec that includes, that has a roadmap for third party access and use. Um, just to lay out some of our, our use cases, like long term, our long term plan is to hopefully be able to uh, do distributed computing on specific things for specific tasks, where you can sort of say, "Hey, I'm I'm really interested in this data set, and and uh, it's a really large data set, and I'd like to lend my machine to uh, doing some computing updates on it as it goes," um, which would be really exciting. But we would really like to have like a clean framework in place that makes permissioning. I, I care about this specific piece of content, not necessarily like all. Um, data sets on our application type thing. And so if we can do that in a way where that privilege and that access control itself is sort of being uh, done in a way that translates nicely to other applications, I think that that's helpful and useful. And so, yeah, um, still got lots to do here, lots and lots to do in terms of just um, collecting up all of the different <laughs> you know, um, versions of identity we can find, um, but then hopefully, Hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll sort of have like a nice glossary of terms, some prior arts, and pull some things from each, read through each of the specs and just pull some of the highlights, lowlights, uh, sort of establish executive summaries of each of them um, as they relate to each other. But yeah, so I think that's my update. It's, it's not exactly dynamic data, but it's uh, identity oriented, which is sort of dynamic data adjacent. No, it is, it is. It is um, it's a very, it's something that, that uh, we really talk, talk a lot about, but uh, really had, hadn't had the time to uh, collect all, all the sources uh, of information, much less compile everything. So thank you for, for, for doing that and, and, and sharing, sharing that with us. It's no very, worries. very cool. Yeah, I'm wondering, um, I, well, while we're here, um, mm -hmm. the uh, Go IPFS I know is sort of taking on this RFC oriented process. To me, this feels close to something that I would sort of love to see as like, the sort of final output of this would be some sort of RFC that could be uh, discussed. Um, does that sort of strike you as a good idea or even, um, you know, how, how, how would you see that intersecting with this working group or, or others? Uh, yeah, so, so usually uh, um, the, the way that, that David sees that is, is yes, have the RFC to, to, to discuss things and then uh, you, on user land, implement something that as, as a proof of concept. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And um, 
even even having like an RFC out for for some time may be useful for for people to to to, to ping you. And and I, I guess on the IPFS notes, there's a lot of IPFS slash notes. There's a lot of um, uh, there's there's some of our uh, RFCs. Uh, mm. There's been like ongoing discussions for for years. And one of the the, the for instance IPLD is one is a, a always a hot topic. It's a, mm. something that describes. Uh, Merkle, Merkle trees. Um, and there's a syntax for for describing paths of or into uh, Merkle DAGs. Uh, that, that's just an example that's been sitting around there for for quite some time and it's been the subject of discussion. And we, we've come through many iterations of of the IPLD spec throughout that. So I think it's it's always a point of reference. It's a good thing to have like an RFC that that even if it's just just a threaded conversation. Absolutely, uh, it's it's something to, uh, and then and then uh, and then eventually coalesce that into into something that that may go into IPFS uh, or not. I'm I'm I'm, um, I'm it's it, I mean some some things I think like authentication are I think should be into uh, IPFS. Yeah, uh, I think it's a basic building block. I'm, I'm, I don't know. There's no more sense to get about that. So uh, yeah. we'll eventually. Uh, hopefully coalesce. Yeah, there's there's questions of I, to me. It's an open question of whether it belongs mm -hmm. in IPFS, but that's um, I definitely would love to. See, I, I think the research is merited either way. Like even if it doesn't end up being an IPFS core sort of um, API, uh, just because if we can sort of at least get the an RFC up, and uh, to me an RFC could just be a giant GitHub issue. Like it doesn't need to be anything mm -hmm. sophisticated. Um, but from there, sort of putting forth a, a proper proposal that says, "Hey, these, this is a, this we there's a phase where we feel like the landscape has been sufficiently analyzed to date. Obviously, things are going to come out every week at this point, but um, this is you know take some slice of time and say, cool, let's pick this, start here.' Um, and the uh, the upside is we well in in terms of a an implementation, we have stuff going on at Query that might be a really nice sort of like test location for a lot of this." Um, where we'll, we'll actually end up just picking, we have to pick a lane on this. Right now, we're just a, a second key pair that lives on top of the IPFS private key. Um, and so we use the IPFS key for um, peer to peer communication, but then we, we have this like second profile key that we use for signing stuff and, and distinguishing people um, or distinguishing identities, I guess, because mm -hmm. there's groups as well as people. But yeah, and so like we could, we could happily f sort of forge ahead and implement something that um, is based on that RFC and use that as a place for comments yeah i'd recommend that you can catch a lot of people's attention and and there is a lot of people that that are interested in, in identity and don't really uh, come here that even though they should should be a good way to to, to catch some attention of core uh, ipfs devs for instance if you're mm -hmm. interested in that people that have been working on ipns or naming services and all, all the, the authentication bits that 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 go into that, so I think that would be a good a good place to to get people's attention. Also, could recommend uh, uh, IRC the IPFS Dev um, on 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 Freenode oh, cool. um, channel. I don't. I only haunt the main IPFS one. I should turn the yeah, IPFS uh, dash Dev. I think. Uh, yep. Um, so that's that's where most core devs and and community devs uh, run IPFS. Uh, uh, hangout. Yeah, um, it would be. Yeah, I think it would be really, really useful to get to get insights on that. Um, cool. On those people. Yeah, and then I guess with that, then I'll I'll just keep forging ahead with this, and um, uh, maybe I'll I'll find it. I think I'll try and post the issue that's sort of tracking some of this. Just asking for anybody who has any. The other identities to identity systems that they know of. Um, obviously, I've been like googling to try and find some of this stuff, but like I had an uncovered Uport, and you told me about that <laughs> today. And so it's just like, oh, okay. Well, and yet another thing to learn about catalog and figure out whether it, how it fits into the ecosystem. Yeah, if if you if you're on Twitter or or, or yeah, if you're on Twitter, uh, you can just tag me, and and I'll help you. I can. We can all help oh, you divulge that then to to. To, for for people to try and come and contribute. Perfect. That's my Twitter handle. But yeah. Okay. Cool. That's super helpful. And so I'll just keep updating on the biweeklies about the progress on that, and we'll see if we can't get that up and rolling. I, my expectation is that'll take at least a month, uh, if not six weeks, to sort of get it 
into a place where it's RFCable, you know, whatever that means. But I, I want to sort of at least have a decent understanding of all of the the sort of participants in this ecosystem. There's a number of players, <laughs> so it's uh, um, it'd be nice to sort of catalog that first. But yeah, once we have that, stick it in place, see if it makes sense as a bit of a roadmap, um, and then we'll see if we can't get something going on our side too. Yes, like like um, yeah, like. Uh, doing like a sum up of, of, of concepts or, or something like that. I'm not, well, it could be a side, a side product, not, not specifically you, but I'm thinking if, if someone would like to do that, it, that would be very helpful to, to, to place together all this, this, well, hey, you are building glossary. So, so I guess it's, it depends on what you call it or, and, and it may not work for everybody, but it's, uh, we'll get it going somewhere and then open it up for critique. And that's, I think, hopefully we can just improve it from there. But, cool. Very good. Cool. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any major updates on the CRDT stuff? I, I know that I'm not like participating directly in it, but I'd still love to hear about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what, so, um, well, what I've done, so I'm, I'm researching, I've been a bit, a bit of researching around some specific types of CRDTs that solve specific issues. One of them is conflict aware replicated data types. Hmm. Um, so that these are CRDT, not, not, Partic not particularly um, pure CRDTs, a combination of uh, a locking mechanism and a CRDT. Mm. So basically, um, it's operation-based CRDT where the operations are, um, there are two different kinds of operations. Operations that require synchronization and operations that don't require synchronization can be executed in parallel. Mm. Uh, so this is a, a, a way for for um, for lock free uh, lock free uh, operations and lock free read operations to be executed quickly. And mm -hmm. then when you need coordination, uh, you, there is a framework to safely gather uh, lock a certain resource between all, all, all the peers, so, so peers can coordinate on that. And one specific use case would be uh, something that people traditionally say decentralized systems could never achieve in a, in a safe way, like a banking account, for instance, mm -hmm. um, where you can have uh, two banking accounts and make a transaction between them in an atomic um, um, way. Mm -hmm. So, so cards, so conflict-aware replicated data types, yeah. Could be a good way to, to achieve. Could that. actually to actually do that because you you have a distributed mutex effectively. Exactly, uh, you have a distributed uh, synchronization primitive, uh, which works works like um, works like Paxos. Okay. Uh, so it works like a, a decentralized um, voting uh, based uh, lock scheme. And, hmm. and, and you, 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 the beauty of that is that you put some invariance, you define some invariance, and instead of executing that and, and into your state, we evaluate whether the invariant is, uh, is true after the operation. And if it's true after the operation, then you detect it that it's, uh, uh, there's a, there could be a conflict. And then you go and into the locking mechanism. Only then uh, you, the lock so you only execute the lock if if, if you detect a conflict. Detect that a conflict it, wow. it, that you need then. So it's as a framework uh, around that. It's a lot of math um, Sounds like it. <laughs> involved. Well, some some math involved. It's not very complicated. You know how these papers are oh, yeah. always seem always a bit more complicated than than they they should be. Mm -hmm. Once you pull it down, it's kind of quite simple. They don't. Yeah. The, the dips of specifying the locking mechanism uh, mm. in itself, um, but but more on how to detect conflicts. Right, and as soon as you can detect conflicts, then you can implement some sort of lock. Um, you can first question that I have in terms of peer-to-peer -peer is always resilience to churn. Um, how how is that handled? Like, yeah. Uh, so consensus. Um, Consensus requires, well, doesn't require, but all the consensus mechanisms I've seen um, when there is uh, topology changes, there is always, um, it's, it's, it's hard to get to get right. So Paxos solves that, uh, Raft, for instance, also solves mm -hmm. that. Uh, but but it it's makes it harder to, to implement, also adds to the latency 
of each one of the operations if there's a high churn. Right, because you're, you're having to confirm a confirm over, over the, the topology change. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when besides getting the consensus over the operation. So it's, uh, it's still a, a challenge if for high churn, um, high churn networks. But if we put it, so assuming that, um, assuming that that was not the case, like if you, so if you had a trusted set of peers that you knew were, you know, had high availability, is this a more, more applicable? Yes, it's more, it's more, it's much more uh, applicable. Uh, as I said, the, 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 it doesn't go into details of, of the, the locking mechanism, mm -hmm. but what I, what I know of Paxos and all the variants of Paxos, I don't know every variant, but, but some are very interesting. Um, they still, they kind of have the same, the same, um, the same attributes of, of uh, if, if, if you have a stable, a stable network, you have to just reach a majority of the nodes for, for the voting me mechanism. And it's mm. really, if you, if you have a lot, a lot of operations, you just can piggyback on, on, on messages. Mm -hmm. so it's basically a one round trip for operation. It's like the, the maximum, uh, sorry, the, the minimum of the majority. So you have to do a, a, a majority of, of round trips and the faster, uh, the fastest ones, fastest 51% 50, 50, mm -hmm. of those uh, is, is your, 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 your limit. Right, that's your th yeah. minimum threshold for, uh, for, for, relation, or, for, or is that for the locking mechanism? Uh, it's, a, it's it's your you have to get the majority and so the the, the fastest uh, fifty more than fifty percent of the nodes the fastest ones replying uh, you, you'll get you get your lock uh, uh, or not uh, mm -hmm. right. hopefully you'll get your 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 lock uh, if there is a uh, high competition on the same resource uh, then you you'll get a bit of latency but if right. distribution of of locking on resources is is normal you, you should also have a normal distribution on, on latency uh, that's great yeah this so, sounds like a really exciting alternative to trying to do like sort of blockchain oriented um, transactions yes uh there is a yeah there's a bunch of of um of research around around um uh, around that like there's this very interesting paper it's not the stellar uh, consensus uh, what's it called it's called um, oh yes stellar coin the, stellar yeah. coin there's, there's yeah. a coin around that so the protocol by, by Meziers yeah I think Meziers is um, what's the name it's uh, federated consensus federated mm -hmm. consensus for FCP mm. consensus it's uh, yeah it's really interesting you know, to achieve that in a, in a scalable federated uh, way and That's there's a lot of, of them. There's cast paxes, which is like I'd only heard about that in a in a month, where you can retry operations uh, if you define the operation in a functional way. Hmm. Um, so oh, in a purely functional way. Yeah, purely functional way. Exactly. Right. Right. Um, well, that's uh, yeah. That's that's such a nice marriage of those two concepts because then you have yeah the side effects are retried. minimized. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Dang. Huh. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Then, do you mind if I, we have, do you mind if I take two minutes to sort of just pick at your brain whether this is the right application for this problem set? Um, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah cause I think this actually applies. Interesting. Like, so we're having some discussions over um, with uh, uh, the IPFS cluster folks, um, where on on the other thing that we do a bunch that I'm, is sort of an open question um, for the next versions of the product we're shipping is. Uh, coordination of replication. So how many peers have replicated which hashes or pinned which hashes? Um, mm -hmm. And so, and trying to get that to scale to some degree. Uh, we've been, for now, we've, uh, so what we're trying to do is trying to bootstrap a network of, of um, distributed data. So like we're trying to track data sets and trying to make sure that the availability of those data sets is very high. And so in the beginning, we're sort of very willing to prop up a lot of that data by having the bootstrap nodes sort of watch announced messages of, of new data sets becoming available and just automatically pinning that data as soon as it's um, as soon as it's sort of noticed. Mm -hmm. Ideally the data set is sizable enough and that our nodes are able to at least replicate once and then we'll pin it and we're our cloud instances are just always online. Great. The but the next sort of hope is that over time we can start to move 
the availability question onto back onto the network where we're we're sort of allowing everyone to say okay uh, that we have n number of peers now um, for this given hash and we have some metric of uptime for each peer and we know that these four or five peers have pinned this thing so we know that the availability of this of this hash across these of this sampling of peers is going to be you know 80 to 90 percent of the time the, of, of the total time that would need to be available mm -hmm. uh, but to do that we need to sort of we need some mechanism so i've been looking a bunch at dhts as the sort of like theoretical it's but that was sort of the first sort of opening uh into sort of understanding how we do like a distributed consensus framework which to be honest is a little bit new to me in general um, but we're sort of yeah and so the question i guess um is do crdts at all make sense for that kind of um, as I understand it, CRDTs are better um, in smaller sets of like sort of a session oriented like peer pad style where we've got, you know, sub a thousand peers. Um, yeah, uh, one thing that, that CRDTs don't, well, uh, CRDTs are, are, are more, I think are more designed for when, we, when you don't, you, you shouldn't afford synchronization between, between peers. So you need to afford, um, so it's for uh, coordination-free uh, collaboration, basically. So mm -hmm. there, there is no, so people, peers can go offline and go online mm -hmm. uh, all the time. I think you're, uh, you, and it's really, well, there's some way to know when the CRDT is fully replicated on, on another peer, uh, if you want to achieve that. But I'm not exactly seeing the use of CRDTs, how that would be applicable. Yeah here uh the thing yeah the thing we're really interested in is coordinating the information around who has pinned what um which is you want to have a, like a global view for every hash or you want you want to just look for this specific hash to know uh, what's the availability story tonight uh yeah we probably need the answer for both right and because the, the specific hash what's the availability is sort of a subset of the global question i guess but I guess, oh, I see, but in the global sense, you would need to, you would keep like a ledger of every hash, every sort of top level hash. Because oh. hmm. um, like we don't really need reference counting, right? Because reference counting isn't actually uh, rich enough in terms of its information, because we need, we're eventually looking for this availability metric, which is. Um, uh, you need to track track which, which peer, uh, which peer it's, it's on. Uh, I guess uh, a normal, well, I'm I'm trying trying to look into the CRDT library and see and see how that that might help, but I'm not seeing something that would scale to 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 a lot of keys. Mm -hmm. uh, you you probably need need uh, something that scales to a gazillion of of yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of keys. Of yeah. keys. So yeah. I, I wouldn't say that you'd have to shard that somehow mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to do a CRDT uh, where everyone. Every node could contribute to 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 that to that thing, but the thing is that each node only changes one part of that of that structure, right? The, right. Which is um, there's a key for hash, and inside mm -hmm. that hash you can have a key per node, node ID. Yeah. Um, what would be a set? Could be a set for for all the node IDs where that hash is replicated to. For and then you would just append yourself to the set if you were. You we would just append yourself to the to the set. That that could, that could work. It's not some. Uh, it's not something that you want to assert on write time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 that's a question. So, do you do, are your writes the, like for instance in DynamoDB where, for a write to be concluded, you need to make sure that there is a majority of nodes that have written that. Right. Case? No. no, yeah. In our so case, after after the fact, yeah, you know. it's after the fact. You're like, cool, I'm available, and so the, you can we can do this as gossip, which is kind of what we do right now, right? Peers are able to ping each other and say, hey, which data sets have you currently pinned, and and the each peer can sort of spit back that list. Um, ideally, what we're having is like we sort of have we almost have at odds problems, right? Like the availability metric of a peer, I to be honest, I would like calculated by the network. It would be nicer to see you know, net, uh, peers confirming for the uptime of another peer so that that peer can't lie about their uptime. But, um, um, the yeah, so mm, that's interesting. Um, there's, yeah, I don't know. There's a, 
Well, so just, this is very tangential to what, what you said, but in terms of uptime, there is a very interesting probabilistic uptime uh, paper. I don't know if you, if you know about that. It's... Uh, no. uh, um, uh, <laughs> accrual failure detection. Accrual. Uh, I'll type it here. Accrual failure. I'm not sure the spelling is correct. There's something like okay. probabilistic oh. uptime accrual failure detection. Yeah. It's um, something that where you can define that there's a probability of the node being up or down. It's never mm -hmm. up or down. It's like everyone contributes in a gossipy way to the probability of, of to the knowledge of the probability of a node being Available. Available, right. Exactly. So it, oh, I see. And by doing it probabilistically, you then you sort of get a built I'll just notice 85% yeah. up. And if yeah. I'm going to declare that it's not up, if it's below, I don't know, 60% or something like that. You interesting. Decide. Interesting. And so, oh, that's so much more. Yeah, that's an easier figure to track because then you're not having to deal with timestamps. You're not having to deal with, oh, you know, this exactly. is interesting. Exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. I've learned oh. a thing today. This is great. <laughs> um, but that, then there is something. Uh, so we were talking about. Oh yeah. So how? Do, yeah, a gossipy thing. Um, yeah, it's it's just an operation that that you need to replicate uh, for each one of the nodes. Uh, do you remove? Do you remove data? Uh, yes, the peers can remove data. So yeah. yeah. So that would be an operation that has to be replicated across nodes in a gossipy way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think this could, could be could be a way to if you, to look. I mean, really simple because it's just you want to yeah you could you want you want to replicate that um, yeah, yeah if I could look into sets uh, well not only set like um, there's a bunch of sets that PN mm -hmm. set so uh, OR set OR set is is an interesting. Uh, solution for that because only the peers that have added it can remove the mm. so it's observed remove set is one of them I'm, I'm, I may have to think a bit more about about that problem but I'm just from the top of my head I think yeah a CRDT with, with the gossip on top of that it could be a simple CRDT to implement actually um, I believe yeah. there's there's a couple of open areas that are yeah and so and one other place where I think CRDTs might be um, valuable is so not only are these these data sets are com accompanied by metadata and so we're keeping like uh, ideally we're keeping information with a generalized categorization of the data set so is this a finance data set is this a um, just a agriculture data set is a climate data set um, and so based on that you know uh, PubSub sort of comes starts to come to mind where you could have like channels of publications um, mm. that could start to subscribe to and sort of be notified of the existence of a new thing. And then it makes it a little easier to sort of uh, naturally sort of shard uh, or scope the, the conversations about data sets that are flying around. Um, yep. so I've been looking at PubSub for that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, that's the last thing I'm going to put on your plate. It's like <laughs> the that we have to deal with. But, um, but yeah, it's uh, the intersection of, of those and CRDTs can be really interesting, uh, particularly where uh, the other side of this is we we have this like notion of groups sort of coming out and a community like it's we call them communities um where we have a number of people who are sort of mutually interested in each other um, regardless of what they're they're sort of um what they're sort of communicating about mm -hmm. and so it's sort of a trusted peer scenario where like you would uh, in an ideal world down the road i could see a situation where a crdt would make a lot of sense for some 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 community that says hey you know we're joining this community crdt which will just naturally we will be notified as somebody adds to this like this war set uh, it sounds really interesting because it sounds like it's a signed addition and removal um and if that's the case then that could be a really great way to verify oh cool that that person is um verifiably a member of this community and has contributed said data set and so we can now naturally replicate across a community which can be really Cool. That's, yeah, that's really, really, really interesting. Uh, the, the CRDT doesn't, doesn't it's, it's just a, cons a type construct. It's not something that it's worries about, um, about uh, identity or permissions. Um, right, that would be something you'd actually inject as additional logic, I'm assuming, right? It's just a, a type. Once you have like an overlay network, you, right. you, you, you have, then you can have implement a CRDT over that. But mm -hmm. I think the interesting part is in the intersection of both, where identity and metadata of, of the operations exist. Like for example, who did this change and, right. and, and can I revert? Can I only, can I filter 
see all the changes except for this user. Yes. Yeah. And uh, etc. So that 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 part, CRDT is a really, really interesting um, CRDT, which are causal trees, all RDTs, and which implement a, a, a tree-like structure called causal tree. Okay. Uh, where uh, you could well you could f you'll still well it's an operation by CRDT but it's optimized for for space um, for the and and the the final representation of that tree resembles the final uh, resembles very much the final uh, uh, structure of the volume that you're you're representing so it's very there is very the complexity of adding a new operation there is, is very is very low and getting the value out, the entire value out is very low. Very interesting. Oh, wow. And one of the, the, the interesting bits on that is that you can easily filter by what I said. So I want to see all the operations except for this view. Uh, or I just want to see where this was at that point in time. Uh, mm. They call it, uh, well, a subtree. And right. it's very easy to cut the tree along a certain line as long as all the all the causal links are 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 still there. So all the parents of the operations are are still right. There. right, right. Um, so there's a, there's a, a bunch of links on the phenomenal. On Thank the, you very much for this. Uh, yeah, that, that, that has that. So there. Are, so for background, there are two types of CRDTs, mainly two big groups of CRDTs. There are state-based CRDTs where uh, there is no history. Then there is uh, operation-based CRDTs, where you can keep the history around. This one, you can keep history uh, around, and you can use that history to filter to filter stuff. So I'm I'm, I'm thinking Google Docs, where people uh -huh. track what 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 changes were, and you can undo what a user has done, and and that sort of thing. Um, or you can kick out people, and then all of a sudden, all the contributions disappear without any. Right, right, and and to my layman's understanding, it's effectively: are you keeping this as a Merkle DAG or not of operations? But obviously, it's not always a Merkle DAG, but like some sort of it is, it's some a, histogram it's of that oh, with with the Merkle DAG because they're they're immutable mm -hmm. uh, operations. The the thing is that there's a cause, uh, so the the each each one of the nodes points to the to the 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 cause. <laughs> so basically, the operation that preceded it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you have that the, the the block which has some metadata and the operation itself, and and so the, it's a causal tree, basically. So uh, where you can represent any type of CRDT operation by CRDT that you want on top of that, where you say just um, for instance a, a document when you do insertion, you say I'm inserting to the right of this character, and the character is not only um, a value in that. Uh, 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 character in that string is also corresponds to an operation in that tree, so you can point the 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 child, so new mm -hmm. new character to the, to the parent character. Right, so it, you, it coalesces both the value and the operation into one structure. And uh, so the the state of the document is the tip of the tree versus the state of the document is the leaves, is the all the you run well. Yeah, you, you execute all yeah, of the operations. The, the root, the root, the root. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. It's That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Pedro, thank you so much for taking the time to explain CRDTs to me. I'm sure this oh, is not oh, what you have planned for the center. Yeah. Or, um, uh, I, love, I love this stuff. Um, this is really, really helpful. I, I, I've, I've been looking for um, a quick rundown on this. And so if you don't mind, what I'd love to do, if you could post this recording after, I'll, I'll, I'll make some notes out of this for others just to sort of, um, and then post it to the... Yes, I'm, 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 I'm recording this right now. I still, I still have to, to take some, some notes on that if you, if you, if you want. So yeah. I can, you can do, for instance, each one of us can, can do their, their note taking. I mean, it can be really, really, really summative or if you, if yeah. you want. Yeah, no, but I think this would be really useful because like, I think you just gave a really great overview of, of sort of the CRDT sort of landscape, <laughs> and oh, it's okay. really helpful. There's a, yeah, there's a research, research. Have open things to look at now, and so I'm, I'm cool. interested in those, and then kind of uh, some of them back. Research uh, CRDT. I'm going to paste here. Research CRDT on on IPFS. Which there's a bunch of links there if you're interested in in, in 
Great. And diving into into some more. Perfect. Well. And then I'll just make sure that everything that you've mentioned is in this list. And if it isn't, I'll PR it in. Um, um, yeah, just, just, yeah, I'm so continuing with, with my status. Uh, yeah, I'm still working on the CRDT over IPLD performance mm -hmm. issue, which I'm blocked on uh, some stuff. Uh, basically, the connection manager being, being tested and, and released. Mm. Um, so this is for scalability of JS app of CRDTs over on top of JavaScript uh, uh, IPLD. Gotcha. And yeah, that's, that's my, my update. Awesome. Yeah, and CRDT support for Go IPFS is not implemented, right? Am I correct in that? Exact. No, no, it's not. It's not implemented in Go, uh, Go IPFS or and JS app. Yeah, uh, in theory, in theory, there's peer CRDT, uh, mm -hmm. and you can, you could run. Hmm. Well, the thing okay. is, I'm not, it's, not, it's not an accusation. I'm just trying to get the layup. No, 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 no. But, but the thing is that. The, the JavaScript CRDTs, so JavaScript libraries of CRDTs that we have worked on, we either adapted it into JS IPFS mm. or um, we created them from scratch and then adapted them to JS IPFS, which is the same thing. And right. and some some of them uh, use PubSub. Most of them use PubSub in some which is primitive in in Go IPFS, which is available in the Go IPFS exactly, right. but. Some of them use direct communication, peer-to-peer -peer direct communication, which is not available over the HTTP API of, of Go IPFS. Uh, oh, interesting, because that's we we actually implement that in our on on query. So we we implement we import libp 2 p and we have our own peer-to-peer um, -peer messaging framework. And so that is not a limitation for us. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, um, but, I mean, we just have the luck of being able to the dependent hash coordination sort of service. And so we get to go build stuff on the P2P, but um, yeah. so, so yeah, yeah. So some of this theoretically we could have, we could start implementing some of these patterns that are, we, that most people at our shop speak JavaScript. Um, we could start. Yeah. So, so you, you, you do that on, on Go. I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure about the Go landscape, what, 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 is, what is out there. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, there is some act, well, it's, it's always, Actor, uh, Java, Java, Scala, actor, or yeah, actor, actor uh, type things that that frameworks that people build on top that build CRDTs on top of that on right. on the more server side land. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps ask ask away on, on some mm -hmm. of those channels if if there is something. Yeah, totally. There. Take a look at this. But this is starting to now that we're getting into the realm of like. CRDT is actually having some pretty serious applications for us. This uh, starts to make more sense for us to investigate. And so I have a lot of reading to do now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, that's, great. Uh, that's cool. Um, cool. Okay, Brandon. Um, any question or any? No, no, not this no. one. But okay. Yeah, it's great. So I'll, I'll try and get some deliverables for the next in two weeks meeting and we'll okay. keep moving. Yeah, my next goals would be would be uh, well to finish digesting these massive delta state CRDTs, which are a very interesting way of transmitting state based CRDTs over uh, uh, in a commutative, uh, idempotent where, where the requirements of the network layer are very loose. Mm. Um, so you don't have to, you don't have to deliver messages in order, and and you can even messages can even be delivered twice. So people can just keep broadcasting their 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 states. The thing is that state based CRDTs uh, can get quite big because the state can get quite big. Right. So there is this delta state CRDTs where the there's a change uh, there that is a delta basically. Right. Uh, which is different from operation. Is, is, is a delta can be uh, is um, uh, an impotent operation. Applying a delta to a state is an unimportant operation. Right. Um, so so yeah, that's what I'm 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 working on, and I'll I'll hopefully finish that. Uh, I'm sure I will finish that in, in two weeks. Awesome. Cool. Well, then hopefully we'll meet up and we'll have all kinds of cool stuff to post. <laughs> all, right. all right. Thank you so much for your time, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro. Really no appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, we'll chat soon.
That's it. Bye-bye.